Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle. What am I doing today? Uh, well, today I'm on a road trip. Um, I'm leaving Norfolk, heading up to Lincolnshire. In fact, I'm almost there now. Um, I'm heading to a place called Binbrook. There's an industrial state there. And uh, there we'll find the My Energy Company. Who are My Energy? They're the makers of the Zappi uh, electric car charger. And that's what I'm uh, interested in today. I've had a chat with my energy and uh, they've invited me to come and see them and I'm hoping to gain some behind the scenes um, information and uh, views of the building of the Zappi chargers so I can get an impression of its size, its quality, its features but also I'm hoping to find out about what's coming soon because I understand they're about to launch a couple of new products or a couple of new features with the product. So I understand that uh, at the moment they only produce a tethered version of the Zappi charger and they're going to be producing an untethered. So I, I want to talk to them about the differences between the two. Is it really just that uh, it's a cable whether it's physically connected or has a connector that you can unplug from it? Um, the other thing I want to talk to them about is their interface to the Zappi charger itself because at the moment I understand that it's a touch sensitive panel on the front of the charger but from what I hear they're going to have um, an app interface and they're building a hub of some description so if they're providing functionality like that then I'm interested in that and I'm also interested in the interface to see what else they can put into that interface and how we can connect and communicate with the Zappi charger um, because if it's as good as the Zappi charger sounds already then uh, it's going to be a really really good feature set that uh, is going to make me want the product at the moment yeah Zappi's top of my list and that's the main reason I'm here I'm not going to go and review every uh, charger manufacturer uh, one it would take too long two I think it's a little bit boring to review charges all the time so I'm picking the one appropriate to me and I want to try and tell you about it and uh, gain as much information as I can about it so anyway we'll leave it there for the moment hopefully next time the video picks up we'll be at my energy see you again in a bit so here we are at My Energy Limited. Yeah, it's a modest building. Um, I was quite impressed. Um, I didn't know whether it would be a shed, a factory, but no, it's what you'd expect from a company that's only been around for a couple of years. Um, it's a nice looking building. While I was waiting outside though, because um, I'd arrived very early, I wanted to be on time, there were people milling around and uh, all dressed casually. I had no idea who they were. Um, they could have been the manager and director for all I knew, or they could have been the cleaner. I really didn't know. One really nice gentleman came over and had a chat, Robin, and uh, helped me answer some questions. And this took me back a little bit, because here I was, just standing by my car, waiting, not expecting anything. I hadn't been greeted, I hadn't been taken in the building. And there I was, asking questions about the technical configuration of the Zappi, and how it worked, and energy loss. And uh, Robin was answering all my questions. Turns out, Robin's the lead developer for the Zappi product, so uh, I'm not sure if that's his exact title, but an influential person at my energy. So thank you, Robin. I appreciate all your help on the day. It was whilst talking to Robin outside that I realised that uh, filming inside the building wasn't going to be appropriate. I didn't want to spend time setting up a camera on a tripod, um, trying to look for the right light angles. I didn't want to focus on filming. What I wanted to focus on was me as an individual wanting to find out which charger I wanted to buy and was it the Zappi. So I haven't done filming on the inside in a formal fashion. Uh, I've taken some photographs though and uh, hopefully I can tell you the story and give you the summary of what I discovered while I was there. So let's get some of the uh, initial thoughts and concerns out of the way. Uh, my first thought was about the size of the product. So I've got some photos here. Where I've put my hand in front to give you an idea of size. It's actually a little bit smaller um, than I was expecting. I thought it would be bigger. So yeah, I'm much happier about thinking about putting it onto the wall. Okay, another primary concern, the cable and uh, how it's hidden. So basically, I've got a couple of pictures here that will show, um, if you just want to lay the cable loose over the top um, of the charger unit, it's there for hanging on the wall, you don't need extra hooks. 
Um, it just depends how you want to hang the cable in the place that you install it. Um, you might want a, um, a holder for the type 2 on the wall so that always stays connected on the wall rather than hanging um, actually over the unit. There, there are lots of choices for that. Uh, but for me, I'll probably wind it back up tight and have it um, not really visible. And yeah, that worked quite well. Uh, I'm not sure what the 8 meter cable would look like, um, but the 5 meter would be absolutely fine for me. My next thought is towards the visual display on the front. This was probably my primary concern, but having seen it in person, I'm much happier. It's apparently a transflective screen. So uh, I'm not sure what exactly that means, but in summary what I was told was it's so you can see it. <laughs> so it's not one of these screens that will fade or be difficult to see in different lights. It is visible, you can see it. Um, only the shininess on the front of the panel probably uh, prevented me from seeing some of the data. So I think on the camera shots that I've got here, it's uh, showing that it's not as easy to see as it actually was by the naked eye. So I'm not going to go into all of the technical features of the product. Uh, what I'll leave is the uh, data sheets um, at the uh, end of the video and also a link to them that I'll post on my Facebook page so you can see all the technical detail. Um, but for me, one of the important things that I wanted from a charger, whether it was the Zappi or another charger, is it load balancing? Um, basically, it's intelligence so that you can detect what you're doing in the home. And... If you're doing lots of electrical work in the home, you've got your oven on, the hairdryers are on, the vacuum cleaners are on, whatever it is you've turned on, um, I want the charger to know that and to throttle back the charging to the car so that the house isn't overloaded. And that sort of smart technology should be standard on all EV chargers, in my opinion, because you do want to protect your home. For me, that was a key feature, and of course, the Zappi has it. I already knew that, and that's one of the main reasons why I was interested in the product to start with. So what happens when I do get solar? Um, do I have to get an engineer back um, to update the Zappi? That was one of the things I wanted to know. How does it actually connect? Well, it's something called a CT clamp. It's a little clamp that goes over the top of your uh, power cable. So you'll have one to start with, with the Zappi being installed on your um, main household uh, power so that the Zappi can detect the usage of the home and then uh, throttle back smartly the uh, charging to your car. So it's basically another one of those. So you'd install a second one and that would go on the uh, end of the solar array so that the Zappi charger can detect whether you've got enough power coming from the solar to put through the charger to the car. So it's as simple as that. It, to me, that seems like it's something I can do myself and certainly with some support over the phone from my energy. And that leads me on to um, the next point. It's very clear to me that my energy care about the customer. They care about customer service. They care about uh, the EV community. They care about the environment. They're just the sort of company that are going to respond to you. That they're not the sort that uh, you're going to send an email and you're never going to hear back from them. So with that sort of service and that sort of ethos, they're the sort of company that I want to deal with. I think it's a benefit that they're a smaller company and they're more personal. So I'm very happy about that side of things. And when I do go solar, I'm sure if I need them, they'll be there to help. Then there's my question about bi-directional charging. Will the Zappi allow it? Well, it turns out it's not the EV charger that allows it. It's the car charger that either allows it or does. So the Zappi, will it allow it if the car is a bi-directional charger capability? The answer is yes, it will. But equally... My Energy own the software. They write their own software. It's written in C. They develop it and test it on site. So they own it. It's like Tesla with the cars. Because they own it, because they can control it, uh, they can give you downloads, they can give you updates. My Energy are the same. So if bidirectional charging needed an update, they would be able to provide it. So you know, I think My Energy are a really smart company. They've designed this thing from the ground up and it's got the flexibility for the future. So as I got a tour around the building, um, there weren't that many rooms. There was a, a production area, there was a development area, there was an office administration area, um, deliveries and um, packaging area. So there was what you'd expect from a company of their size and what they're doing. And th there wasn't many people around. Um, I think there's only 20-ish uh, uh, members of the team at the moment. No doubt they'll be expanding. What I did notice, though, was it, it wasn't manic. 
yeah, I would just I would describe it as productive. There wasn't a lot of chit chat. There wasn't a lot of uh, people milling around doing nothing. They were all busy, and they all knew what they were doing. From the picture here that I've got of one of their production areas, you'd think, well, where are all the staff? Why aren't they working? I think they must have been a little camera shy, or I caught them at a moment where they're on a break. Because the moment I started pointing the camera and uh, taking a picture or two, everyone disappeared. <laughs> so this is a homegrown product designed in the UK, built in the UK, with many components that are coming from the UK. This isn't cheap import parts from China. For example, this device here, um, which I was fascinated by, it's taking the original green um, computer circuit boards, which were effectively blanks, and uh, they're printing the circuitry on themselves. So they haven't got a design that they're paying another company to do. They're doing it themselves. And then they're adding the actual chipsets, etc., onto the circuit boards themselves. So, yes, I'm going to have a Zappy charger as well. Now, why did I choose that? I think that's quite an important one. You've, you've heard me sound quite positive t- towards Zappy and my energy. And basically, that's it. I am enthusiastic about them. No, they're not paying me or sponsoring me to say any of these things. I'm just communicating my passion from what I've seen. And I'm sure there are other good products out there and good companies. Um, but this one, is it suits me. And why does it suit me? Well, one, it's price-wise. I've worked out that it's only £150 more than the cheapest charger that I I could actually get. So what do I get for that £150 extra? Installed, not just the price of the charger, the full price installed. Because I'm going to be paying £795, which is standard price. I'm not getting any discount from anyone. Um, And that's installed price by an independent uh, installer. But for the extra £150... Yes, grant included, the 300 or 295 that I'm actually going to spend. What I get is a bit of future-proofing. I already get the smart capability, so it's not a dumb charger. I get the future-proofing for if and when I add solar and wind capability on the house, then the charger will be able to cater for it. If I end up going bi-directional in many years to come, the charger will be capable of it. What about the access to it? Um... What about how to control it? Because I didn't really fancy going outside in the rain, fiddling with the control panel on the front. Well, yes, there is an app interface and a hub coming soon. So for me, that capability and the fact that I'll want that capability is something that uh, I can live with. I'll use the charger initially uh, as is, and then uh, I'll get the benefit of the app integration. From what I've seen about the app, it's going to provide all the functionality I want, so I'm extremely comfortable that I'll be able to monitor the charge, I'll be able to look at the uh, history of the chargers, and also I'll be able to control the unit and uh, lock it, unlock it, start charging, stop charging, do all the things that you'd expect to do. Okay, I did spy on one of the desks um, one of their new products that they're working on, the untethered um, version of the Zappi. Now, I haven't got any photos of it. I did ask, and uh, they'd rather I didn't have a photo. They're not ready to release it yet. Uh, I'm not sure on timescales for when that's coming. But it was basically there. I could recognize what it was instantly, um, which should tell you a few things about it. And uh, effectively, it's a Zappi charger without a pre-fitted cable on it. So for some customers that want the untethered version, um, that product is on the way soon. Okay, I'll leave it there then. I hope you gained everything from the video you were hoping for. Um, Hopefully I've told you everything about the Zappi Charger and my energy. I apologise for my enthusiasm. Yep, it's a great company, it's a great product, and it suits me perfectly. And uh, I'm very happy to be buying one. Uh, Very happy that uh, it'll be installed in the next few weeks, hopefully. Uh, I have arranged for that with an independent installer. And it'll be here before the uh, Kona arrives, so everything's going absolutely perfect at the moment. The date for the Kona? Yep, it'll be at my dealer by the 10th of September. I've had that confirmed now, so I've just got to arrange uh, the actual day and time that I pick it up. So everything's going well, everything's on target. I hope that's the same for you as well. Take care for now, see you again soon. Bye.